Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, what I want to do is I want to talk about bins. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, bins are a fairly straightforward concept inside of any editing application. However, in Media Composer, as much as they do work the same as in other applications, they have changed a little bit. Uh, in a very controversial update to Media Composer from a few years ago. And instead of them just being now bins, they are actually now called bin containers. And they work a little bit differently than how they used to. And this actually was from a question that I saw online about a week ago asking from a new user how they work because they were a little bit confused. So in this lesson, what I want to do is I want to talk about bin containers I also want to show you how you can organize your bins, whether you're tabbing them or whether you're docking them to different parts of the interface. So this way you're comfortable when we actually get a little bit more advanced and talk about more advanced concepts. Now, also before we get rolling, I just want to draw your attention to the last tutorial I did to the comment section because I actually want to thank Mr. Froopy. Mr. Froopy actually commented on the tutorial that I did where I talked about setting up a project for a 23976 workflow and how it was a very common workflow for most Media Composer editors. And Mr. Froopy had said that many networks still call for a 5994i delivery just so that I know. And basically, Mr. Froopy had said that they have been delivering or editing and delivering 5994 interlaced to networks for decades. Now, one situation that I always sort of run into in doing these tutorials is I sort of have to pick one pathway towards our end goal. And what I like to do then is to branch off here and there to talk about other concepts. So as much as I want to show all the workflows, what we're going to do in this tutorial series is talk about 23976 as being our main uh, deliverable workflow. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to get in in later lessons and talk about how you can deliver for broadcast if they require a 5994i delivery. Now, I do want to thank Mr. Froopy for commenting. I appreciate your comments, whether they are positive, negative, critical, or, you know, uh, basically uplifting. So please, on any tutorial, if you have a question, a comment, a complaint, Post it right down there. I do read them all. And again, thanks, Mr. Froopy. I appreciate you making this an open dialogue because that's really what helps push this tutorial series forward and actually gives fuel to new ideas for me to add on at a later time. Now, last but not least, before we jump into this tutorial, please, 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 we want to get the word out there about these tutorials. So please like, subscribe, and share these tutorials across your social media channels. If you know somebody that's trying to learn Media Composer, please recommend the channel to them. I really do appreciate it. And it's just going to help anybody that's either trying to make a switch trying to learn Media Composer, or maybe they just have to jump from Premiere or Resolve into Media Composer to do something quick point them in the direction of one of these tutorials because hopefully it will help them out and help them get that job done faster than ever. All right, now this is pretty much where we had left off from our last lesson. And I did say before, we're gonna start talking about bins and bin containers. Now, if you're familiar with any type of nonlinear editing, you are familiar with the concept of a bin. A bin is what is going to contain anything from audio to graphics to clips to even timelines. Now, Media Composer made a change a few years ago, switching from a project and bins uh, environment to a bin container environment. And it was a big source of controversy between uh, veteran Avid editors um, because it's not really how they were accustomed to working. And to be honest, I love bin containers. Bin containers, uh, I hated them when I first started out with them, but I forced myself to work with them for a week and now I love them. I'm going to show you in this lesson how they work, how they sort of change up the concept of how a project works inside of Media Composer. And I'm pretty sure that when we're done, you're going to love it too. And I also want to point out that this sort of came about with uh, someone that was new to Media Composer asked a question on Facebook and I happened to see it. And it occurred to me that we should probably talk about this concept before we talk about anything else. Now, if you're familiar with nonlinear editing applications in general, you're probably familiar with the concept of a project and bins window being sort of over here on the left. This is our composer of Media Composer window here with the preview window and the record or the sequence window. And we have your actual timeline down here in the lower right hand corner. Now we're going to talk more about how we can set up workspaces in a later tutorial. But I just wanted to sort of introduce you to this overall concept of what everything is and where it lives. Now this was a very common 
sort of layout for Media Composer editors. We have the project here. We have the bin that's open right here. Now, you'll notice that over here on the left, we have a little tab that says bins. It doesn't say project, it says bins. And the reason that that is, is because as much as this looks like it's a project, what we're actually looking at here is this bin. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it sequences for right now. All right, just because we're going to add a few more and we can differentiate between them as we go. I'm only going to add four, so don't worry, we're not going to be adding like hundreds of bins here. All right. And you'll notice that if I take sequences and I actually just pull it down a little bit and I let go, you'll notice that it actually separates from what we think is the project. Now, what I can do here if I want to is I can bring this over like such and I can work with this bin floating around. I can stick it on a different monitor. I can move it wherever I want, whatever I'd like to do. Now, you'll notice that if I actually come over here to the left-hand side of the sequences bin, I can actually click and drag and I can pull out the sidebar to reveal all of the bins that are contained within this project. So no longer am I actually confined to having the project window right here and being forced to constantly go there to get bins. At any point, if with any bin, I can simply pull the sidebar out and access all of the bins there. And if I don't need them, I can simply close that window back up again. Now, you'll notice that if I move the bin over and I actually drag the sidebar out over here, you'll notice that I can't actually do it. Because what's important to keep in mind is that with that first bin, if I close it and I reopen it here, this is actually the bin container for that bin. All right, you'll see I can pull it out here, reveal the bins that are in this project, and I can pull it back. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more bins here. I'm actually going to add three bins. And what we're going to do is we're going to call them audio, graphics, and clips. Now, when you're working to get yourself rolling, really you can use these four bins as your basis for everything. Everything, every clip, every element you bring into Media Composer can fall into one of these four categories. Now we'll talk more about adding folders and then adding bins to folders in a later lesson, but just to get you started and get you rolling, you can create these four bins. All right, audio clips, graphic sequences. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna swipe this sidebar over here to the left and you'll notice that I can easily tab through any one of these bins. And if I had 10 sequences in here, I would see them. If I had, you know, 30 audio clips, I would see them. I'd see clips in here, I'd see graphics in here. All right, now with that said, at any point if I decide, maybe I like to work with the graphics window over here, maybe on my left display, or I just wanna move it somewhere else, I can always pull it out and let go. Now you'll notice that we had those green bars up here. We'll talk about those in just a second. Now. You'll notice as soon as I pulled graphics out, what appeared? The sidebar over here appeared that shows all of the bins that are currently open. Now, of course, if I don't need that, no problem. I can simply just drag it back over there. I can now, again, we'll just assume this is a secondary display for now. I'm just going to pull out these bins just like such. And I can now, on a secondary monitor, have them all floating around wherever I want them. I can work with them however I need to very quickly and very easily. And I'm just going to leave the last sequences one right there. Now the question is, what if I had just done this and I decided, oof, I hate this. This is terrible. Maybe what I want to do is just put them back into a tabbed format so it's easy for me to go through and easy for me to find anything. You'll notice that if I take this bin, and what I should do here is just seal it up like such, move that sidebar over. If I take the bin, you'll notice that it immediately tells me that I can't do anything with it until I come here and suddenly everything's highlighted. Well, we don't want to worry about that right now. What I'd actually, I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option or Alt on the keyboard. Now, you'll notice as soon as I do that, our four bars, our four green bars switch from being the bars to a basic green line across the top. What this is telling me is now I can take this bin up and I can actually add it as a tabbed bin. I'm going to do the same thing with clips. I'm going to do the same thing with graphics. Now that's option on the Mac, alt on Windows. Now at any time I can rearrange these however I like so that I can easily go through and find what I need. Now for me, I don't like working in a tabbed environment. I also don't like having my bin scattered everywhere. How I like to work is depending on what I'm doing, I actually like to get in and have access to all four of those bins or whichever the main bins that I happen to be working with at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab graphics and I'm going to grab it and drag it right down here to the bottom to where that green bar is. And you'll notice as soon as I bring it right down there, it's going to highlight 
a good two thirds of the bin window and I'm gonna let go and you'll notice that now what it's done is it's actually tabbed in or not tabbed in it's actually created a new bin window here for this particular bin what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab clips I'm gonna stick it here I'm gonna grab audio I'm gonna stick it over here and what I've basically now done is created a four-way bin setup now depending on the resolution of your screen you could have a lot more than this but now instead of me having to click back and forth between the different tabs, I can have access to all four bins by simply blocking them out exactly the way that I need them very quickly and very easily. All right, I think that's a good place to leave off for now. This is sort of an introduction to bin containers because trust me, we're gonna talk a ton about bins as we move along, but I thought that this was an important concept for you to wrap your head around before we really get in and start working. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. And I wanna remind you as always, please, 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 if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, subscribe, share it across social media and comment. Whether your comment's positive, whether your comment's negative, that's okay. What it does is it gets us discussing all kinds of different situations inside of Avid Media Composer. And if you have any questions for me, you can always feel free to email me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.